Hey guys, Ash and Kayla here from Really Fit. Today we are talking keto yeah, and why we do not promote keto as a diet. And basically we're gonna go over a whole bunch of good stuff for you. We're gonna start with what exactly keto is, what it means to go into ketosis, who the keto diet is actually good for, who it's not good for, and then we're gonna get into how you can benefit the keto um, diet without doing the keto diet. We're giving you the Royally Fit approved version yes. of how you can have the benefits of keto. Yeah, exactly. So we're gonna go over all of this. I, did I miss anything? Also, first off, guys, just say hi. Let us know that you're there. Yeah. Give us a thumbs up, a heart, say hello. We wanna yeah, see hey, who's, Cam, who's hey, watching Steph. today. So yeah, awesome. nice and, to have a conversation. And chime in whenever you want um, to ask some questions and yeah. if you need any clarification on anything because we want this to be so informational because it is a super trendy diet. It is a hot topic. It is a really hot topic right now and one that we feel very strongly about um, so we want you guys to get something out of this because it's very easy it's very attractive diet it's very easy to get lured into so make yeah. sure that you come out of this learning something and feeling more empowered by not going keto yes alrighty yeah so why don't you start with what the keto diet is yeah okay so a keto diet is focusing on very very low carb and a high fat diet. So typically it's about 70% of your calories are gonna come from fat, about 20% of calories come from protein, and then only 10% come from carbohydrates. And the whole point is, is that you burn through all the carbs in your body, which um, you're burning through the glucose, and then you're now gonna, you burn through those reserves, and now you're gonna get into the fat, and you're gonna be starting burning fat as fuel as opposed to gl glucose as fuel. Yeah, because yeah. our body naturally wants to use glucose as fuel because it's easier. It's, it's easy, easier yes. on us. And that's why keto is, people like it, is because it is burning fat. So yes, that is 100% accurate. It is burning fat. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, and then so going into ketosis, if you want to um, give a little bit more detail on that. like So that's the keto diet. It's basically limiting your carbs to like 10%. And on average, um, that is about 20 to 50 grams of carbs per day. All right? Yeah, 20 to 50 grams is not a lot of carbs at all. So just as an example, a banana has 27 grams of carbs in it. So you can see how quickly it, you can burn through your allowed, allowed carbs. Yes. Um, but basically the whole point of ketosis is to use, like we said, that fat as fuel. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's actually too much more to explain of what it is other than it's very low carb yep. and then it's very high in fat. Um, and I think one of the things that people kind of argue back and forth with is um, there are right ways, I guess, that you can do keto. There are ways you can do it that are healthy, and then there's wrong ways where it's a lot of not healthy fats yes. and stuff. And I think a big problem with keto too, and we are going to talk about the pros of keto. Yeah. Um, but I think a big thing with keto too is that people... Jeez. Thunder. There was a big lightning that went yeah. Sorry, I'm a little okay. jumpy. Um, <laughs> hey, Becky. So I think the big thing is that people see the results that you go on social media, you see everyone tagging keto, 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 keto. I've lost 30, 30 pounds in 30 days. Yeah. Woo -hoo. And then like, but a lot of people do it uneducated and they just sort of like, okay, I'm going to get between 20 and 50 um, carbohydrates a day. I'm going to max out there. And like, they don't, they're not educated about it. They don't do a lot of research. They're just so... I don't know, in need of seeing a change in their body that they jump on it and they do it wrong. So that is one of the big problems because yes, it can be done in a good way, but it is often done in an incorrect way. Yeah, and I will, I will say, you guys know I'm a holistic nutritionist. I still find the keto diet confusing. I'm not really somebody that wants to sit down and write everything I'm doing. I don't want to do the math. I don't want to pee on strips, which we'll elaborate on if you're wondering why I would say that. Yeah. <laughs> we will get to that in a minute. Or a blood test or a breathalyzer or yes. yeah. or having the keto flu. We're going to go through all of this stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So the pros of doing the keto diet. I think the first thing that needs to be brought up is that obviously weight loss. And that's why so many people are doing this right now is that you will have pretty rapid weight loss. And so that is a very attractive thing. That is usually the number one reason people do it. And then the other reasons are it suppresses hunger. Yep. It reduces cravings. It improves your blood sugar. You have more energy, enhanced focus, as well as a, a reduced risk of disease. Especially Which, neurological disease. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But I, in my opinion, if you're wondering, um, <laughs> I actually think it can promote disease because uh, it, it often when it's done incorrectly, you're consuming inflammatory foods. So I think and it actually promotes. When done incorrectly, it's a lot, a lot of protein, which is very taxing on your liver and your kidneys. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a lot of like, like 
really fatty foods just done incorrectly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So um, those are the pros of keto. So yes, if you're going to do it um, in a smart manner and you're going to be super educated about it, you will see some of these results. Yep. But now we're going to go into the, um, actually, we're not going to get into the cons. Should, yeah, I was going to say, let's go into who it's good for. Yeah, let's go into who it's good for. So um, when we talk about reducing the risk of disease, people that it's good for is people with epilepsy, specifically people that are not responding well to medication for epilepsy. And this is actually how the keto diet was um, discovered, yeah. is because they were putting people that had epilepsy on the ketogenic diet and that they were noticing not only were their symptoms improving, but there was actually a dramatic amount of weight loss and um, focus and all that kind of stuff. All yeah. the good stuff that we just listed. Yeah. So that's one of them, um, as well as helping. <laughs> ah, hey Brenda, um, helping to reverse type two diabetes. Yep. Yeah. Alzheimer's. Yes. Um, autism, and brain and other types of cancers. So one of the benefits of following a keto diet it is very good for your cognitive health. Um, it's very good for your brain health. Healthy fats in general are very good for your brain, and that's why one of the big things they talk about is the brain health. So that's the connection there. It's the healthy fats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's who it's good for. Now we're gonna get into who it's not good for. And this is where you start to get the idea of why Rarely Fit does not approve the keto diet. Well, first, can I do the first one? Yes. Of being a foodie? Yes. I am obsessed with food. My life revolves around when I get to go to my next favorite restaurant. And I love Italian food. I love pizza. I love and you pasta. Love I love potatoes. I love cooking. Yeah. I really honestly think of just for my sanity, it's not for me. Yeah, I can do a lot. I have a lot of willpower with things, but I don't have any desire to get rid of carbs. Yeah. yeah, so probably not good for a foodie. And if you are a foodie and you consider yourself one, you're gonna feel deprived. Plain and simple. And deprived means no success. Yeah, because you're eventually gonna crack and binge. Yeah, exactly. Um, another thing is that people that don't have time. So the keto diet requires you to track your macros. Okay, because if you're going to do it right, you have to do it like the 70% fat, the 20% protein, the 10% carbohydrates. So you're going to have to track your macros. And then if you're going to be doing this subtraction from um, the carbohydrate minus the fiber, you're going to also be spending time doing that to see how many carbohydrates you've had in the day. You're also going to be maybe peeing on a strip to see if that you're actually in a ketosis state. Or testing your blood. That's yes. another way that you can do it. Yeah. And the interesting thing is that a lot of people um, that are actually doing the breathalyzers are, are the P test, it's, they're not always getting accurate answers. So you actually might think you're in ketosis and you're not the most accurate one is the blood one, which, which is, it, it's expensive. Yes. So once again, this takes time. Like this, this and a stuff lot of brain takes time. Power. Yes. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's another reason. Um, do you want to go into the next one? Yeah. Anybody that has some sort of eating disorder or had a past with eating disorders or not even that it was a full disorder, but it was something that they thought about a lot. And that's where Ashley and I fit in. Mm -hmm. We never, we were fortunate enough that we never went to anorexia or bulimia, but like we have had obsessive moments where we felt Very. like failures if we didn't meet exactly what we were supposed to meet. If I, I used to use my fitness pal, for example, and if I went 10 calories over, I was like, I'm an, a failure. I can't believe I did that. How hard is it to do this? Yeah. So if you have that kind of obsessive um, or compulsive type of behavior when it comes to food, I feel like this is like a gateway drug to a full blown obsession. A hundred percent yeah. because you're once again and like Kelly was saying I used to really focus on my calories a lot and I actually before it was the um, the keto diet like when I was younger it was the Atkins diet and so yeah. like, I went through a phase where I was trying to limit my carbs and I would feel so guilty around that and I remember I would if I went over my caloric amount or over my carbs I would feel so guilty that the next day I would abuse myself at the gym and then I would under eat so you yeah you either starve yourself yeah or you go Fuck it, I already screwed today up. Oh, and then I I'd binge. just eat all the carbs. Yeah, and then I binge and then I'd feel sick. Yes. Yeah. So and a healthy lifestyle isn't about making yourself feel guilty. It's yeah. about when you do have those quote unquote cheat days that you enjoy them and that you know that it's part of your life. The, the guilt around food and the shame and the obsession, it has to go because you're never going to succeed if you don't feel free. And yes. I honestly, there might be a few people out there that feel free doing the keto diet, but I think it's a. Uh, slim to none that really truly feel in control and free and it's i think it's temporary yeah um so another another person that's not good for is somebody that wants to enjoy a couple beers after a long week and a hot day with their significant other and like right there not happening because if you're going to do a keto diet you can't go in and out of ketosis it is very hard on your body you will feel like shit 
Um, you will feel lethargic. You will actually even possibly feel sick to your stomach. You may even possibly get sick to your stomach. So it is not something you want to go in and out of. So if you're not willing to sacrifice that piece of birthday cake or those couple beers or like just going and getting some apps with your girlfriends at a restaurant or having a mashed potatoes. Yeah. Like if you're not <laughs> willing to sacrifice that, not for you yeah. because you're going to feel deprived. Yes. Um, do you want to go on to, uh, oh yeah, you already talked about food yeah. anxiety. Yeah. Um, we could actually kind of maybe go into the keto flu stuff now since yeah, we're talking sure. about that going in and yeah. out of ketosis. So yeah. one of the things that happens when you first get into that ketosis state is you have what's called the keto flu and it basically just brings on symptoms of having a flu. You feel sick, you feel weak, you feel lethargic, you might have brain fog, you could feel nauseous, headaches, all those types of things and that's to be expected in the keto diet and they always say, you know, just get past that one to two weeks. Once you're past that, it's smooth sailing. That's wonderful. However, one, I don't want to make myself sick for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Two, if you go out of ketosis drastically again and say you do say it's my birthday and I'm having beer, I'm having birthday cake and I'm having chicken Alfredo, then you have to go through that ketosis phase all over again and go through that flu all over again. And then now your body's like, what the hell is happening? I'm used to running on fat. Now you have me running on glucose. Okay, now I'm running on fat again. It's actually very hard on your body yes. to make those drastic changes all the time. Yes, it is really hard on your body. And from my experience, and I, when Kelly and I were talking earlier about this, I said I really want to talk not just from a scientific spa um, space because science proves that keto is actually really effective. Yeah. But I want to talk from an experience base. I, I've been a personal trainer for 13 years. You've been a personal trainer for quite a few years. I'm going on seven years. Yeah. yeah. And so 20 years combined, I have not seen one client successful, not one client successful on a low carb diet for longer than a year. And it's very rare they even make it that long. And that's not a diet that I was promoting, but there were people that went ahead and did it and I had to support them while they were doing that. And not one person has lasted, not one. And in fact, a lot of those people gain weight after. A lot of those people gain weight. They, because you're going in and out and in and out, you're, you're um, starting the cycle of yo-yo dieting and then also like really messing with your head because when you don't stick with it and then you start to gain weight, then it's like, I'm gonna have to restrict my carbs more this time. I have to get more hardcore this it's time. It's essentially like mind torture in a way. And that's not just keto, it's strict diets in general. And it's taken Ashley and I a really long time to get to a place and I am still not perfect. I still have days where I'm like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have, you know? And you, I just feel like you can't fully love yourself and be happy with who you are when you're obsessing over restricting food. Like there's so many more things in life that you have to worry about. Food shouldn't be something that controls you and makes you either feel like you should, that you're winning or that you're losing. Like yes. your value is not based on what you ate that day. And when you make it about that, you're, you're missing out on the beauty of life and enjoying yes. delicious food. Yeah. And that's another thing that you and I were talking about is that like food, it shouldn't, and like this goes for any diet, like whether it is for, um, Weight Watchers or keto yeah. or whatever, like South Beach. South Beach, any of those diets, you, when you restrict your a macronutrient or you restrict your calories, um, and you really restrict your life, you restrict, um, enjoyment of food with other people. Like you restrict your, um, your entertainment when you're having people over or you're going somebody somewhere else. Like, it's like it affects your entire tribe. Yes. So if you're stressed out about going to your grandma's for dinner because she's going to be serving pasta with garlic bread and you're like, well, I can't go. Think about this. Think about yourself in 50 years and you're lying in your deathbed are you gonna think man am i glad that i never had that piece of pizza i looked so good skinny hell no and that's how it is in life like you have to be able to enjoy the moments i don't want to look back and regret my life and be like i can't believe that i let food win that yeah. i let something as silly that as food that's supposed to be enjoyable it's supposed to be a social thing yes for me cooking is my my me time i love being in the kitchen it feeds my soul and I don't want to, I just can't imagine living a life where I can't have a piece of cake. No. And I think and it draws you away too much from intuitive eating and listening to your body and listening to what it needs. And that's a lot of the reason that Royally Fit will not approve a diet like this because we're really about intuitive eating, balanced eating. And I have had people challenge me and be like, will you promote a non-dairy, non-gluten diet? Yes, we do. Most of the time. Right? Like not like a, you have to stick to this and you're going to feel like absolute shit if you don't. And like, and like it, so it's not, it's not a hundred percent of the time or you're not successful, but also 
this is that we're not restricting your calories. We're not restricting your macronutrients. You're still going to be fulfilled. And honestly, going from old Ashley that was like super restrictive and super obsessive and to where I am now, not only am I liberated and empowered and then, but I also enjoy my food more. And then the bonus, the byproduct is that I lost weight. Yep. And then it wasn't, it, I wasn't like banging my head or my fist on like a table, like trying to count my calories and like feeling guilty if I was hungry, but I didn't want to eat anymore. Like it sh life shouldn't be like that. You should feel empowered and listen to your body and, and follow like an intuitive eating. And once you start eating whole foods, intuitive eating becomes a lot more natural. Yes. Once you, once you kind of cleaned everything up, if you eat like shit, you're like, well, my intuition is telling me I need a Big Mac. Yeah. It's once you get yeah. into that routine, once you've broken free from the obsession of the unhealthy foods that's when you like there's days where i'm like oh i've been working out really hard i i need to up my my carbs and then there's days where i'm like yeah i've been overdoing it i can feel it in my stomach i need to reel it in a little bit i literally know by how i feel of yeah. what my body needs yes and just know that does take time and it takes sometimes food journaling it takes making notes writing down how you're feeling after you eat but it can be done and it's it's a really awesome feeling to just kind of to know. Yeah, and to be in control. And um, so Kaylee and I, as an example, we went into our um, Banish the Bloat Challenge. Yes. So which we just made evergreen and you guys can sign up for whenever you want and it's free. So using um, one of our recipes, which is our morning smoothie, as an example, um, it, what did it have? Now I'm forgetting. Oh no, this is actually the one from um, the July meal plan. That oh, I pulled. okay. It was the gut healing green smoothie. And it had. And it I had looked had at it forty seven carbs. Forty seven carbs. Yeah, mind you, that was for two servings, but that was like that would be done your carbs for the day. Um, here's the example I wanted to use. So yes. as the banish the bloat one, as an example, royally fit, we have women eating on average fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred calories per day, and within those fifteen to eighteen hundred calories per day, they don't know it. We don't list it. I mean, we're telling you now but like we we don't list it because we don't want them focusing on macronutrients we don't want them focusing on calories but just to use this as an example on average you guys are having 150 grams of carbs per day the lightest day that I had on there the absolute lightest day was 100 grams the highest we got up to was 190 yeah. and this just so you know during the banish the boat the whole point was actually to reel the carbs in a little bit because we're not promoting a high carb diet we're just promoting a moderate carb diet yeah and so we reeled it in for those 10 days and the results that we saw from these women in 10 days are unbelievable. This one was only seven when we can. Oh yeah. When yeah. we did the seven day, you're right. Seven yeah. day. We had women that had lost 10 pounds in seven days and they weren't deprived. They were still getting their carbs. You weren't restricting the calories like crazy. We just had them eating clean whole foods. We focus on things that aren't and or that are anti-inflammatory. So we focus on giving you guys foods that are not going to inflame you because if you're inflamed, you're going to be retaining water and you're going to be more apt to store and um, build fat. Right? And disease. <laughs> and disease. So, and that's another thing. And I was actually just thinking about this on the way over that like it shouldn't just be about weight loss. And I know that was a big shift for me too. Like when I started eating more intuitively, it was, it shouldn't be about weight loss. It should be about your health. Yeah. And it should be about your energy and your vitality and like how much you can give to your kids on a daily basis, how, how present you are at work when you're there and like how connected you are when you're in a conversation. Are you feeling like really unfocused because you're not eating enough calories or carbs? Or yeah, you're sitting in the office and they have that thing of snacks and you can't even listen to the meeting because you're like, I see a donut, I yeah. see a donut. I see a donut and yeah. it, and it controls you because yeah. I don't feel that way. Yeah. And I used to, I used to, Oh my God. Yeah. It was like a, a sick test almost to me of like how long I could go without having one of the, yeah. my favorite things. Yeah. And I would never talk about it to anybody. Like yeah. nobody knew that I was obsessing over this. Yeah. I used to, I remember like, I love donuts. Like, I love donuts. Mm -hmm. And I think I went almost like two years once like out having a donut. Cause I was like, mm -mm, mm -mm. I will safely say I eat donuts more now <laughs> yeah. than ever. Yeah. And I feel my happiest and healthiest that I yeah. felt in a really long time. I eat more carbs and calories than I ever have. And I am the lightest, well, not preferably the lightest I've ever been because I've lost <laughs> a lot of muscle as of late, but I am like the thinnest, the least amount of body fat, I should say, yeah. that I've ever had. And it's because I have intuitive eating and I'm eating things that are not inflaming my body. And that's why we don't promote um, having cow's dairy and gluten. And then that's so, it, but it's not restrictive. There are so many ways around it. Yeah. So, but if you do have it, we're not going to make you feel guilty about it. And you're not going to have to go back into ketosis. So, yeah, so anyways, that's that, those are things who it's not good for. Is there anybody else? Um, 
uh, oh, people that, we just want to list the medical people, the medical conditions of people that should not be following a keto diet. Um, people with gallbladder disease, a history of pancreatitis, kidney disease, people with impaired liver function, type 1 diabetes or impaired insulin production, or people with a history of alcoholism or even a high consumption of alcohol. And that's not like from us, we looked that up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you guys know we're always doing our research. We love yeah. to give our opinion and we love to give our experiences, but we do also want to back it up with the research. Yeah, so, yeah. so I hope that was helpful. So um, do you want to get into the benefits of keto? Did sorry, sorry, the, sorry. The benefit, how you can get the benefits okay, of yes, keto. Yes. The really fit. Here's the good news. And yes. this, so I heard for the first time a few months ago when I was at the CSNN alumni conference. That's a school that I went to, the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition. Julie Danilik was on stage talking. So I was like, ma, paying attention because I'm obsessed with her. <laughs> and she was talking keto. And I'm like, shit. Like, she does keto. I'm like, how long can I, like, say no to this keto thing if she's even for keto? Yeah. And then she says, okay. Keto, great. Sustainable, easy to do. Does it make you miserable? Probably. These are, I'm, I'm summarizing her words. <laughs> but she said that one of the best ways that you can get the benefits from keto is from doing intermittent fasting. Do, do, do. Which Ashley and I are all about, as you know. Yes. And if you're new to watching us, we have done a post about um, intermittent fasting. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. But we actually are going to be doing an updated intermittent fasting pod, or Facebook Live, I've got podcasts on my yeah, yeah. Facebook Live in two weeks. Yes. So we will, because when we first did that podcast, we'd only been doing it for a couple of weeks. It's been about 10 months now. Yeah. So we wanted to do an update. We've learned so much more about it and share all that information with you guys. So anyways, when you do that extended fast, like the 16 hour window of fasting-ish, mm -hmm. your body will start to burn through all of your glucose and get you into that ketosis state. The other option is your one-to-one -one. yes and i'm actually going to read this from the book so that you guys know that i'm being super credible and this is from a functional medicine doctor dr yes. hyman dr hyman but and he's also a regular medical doctor as well okay so he says um there are two hacks when it comes to getting the benefits of the keto diet without much effort so one he talks about the intermittent fasting as well just like julie did so we're going to kind of bypass that because we'll get into that in two weeks and then the second option is to take two to three tablespoons of a one-to-one -one mixture of coconut oil and MCT oil. So anyone that doesn't know what MCT oil is, it's a medium triglyceride chain. Um, medium, medium chain triglyceride. Yes, sorry. Wow. Yeah. Medium. I was thinking, picturing about if I should go get the bottle of it or not. Yeah. So I was like thinking about two things there. So that oil is actually from the coconut as well, and it's condensed down. So basically you would take like one tablespoon of coconut oil, one tablespoon of the MCT oil, combine it, and you can add it into your coffee. So your good tea, in coffee. Your smoothie. That's what Bulletproof smoothie. Coffee is made from. Yeah. So and he says smoothie. if you do that three times a day, that's going to actually have you producing low levels of ketones throughout the entire day. So he's saying you can do one or the other, or if you really want to double up, you could do both. Now, that seems like a lot of MCT oil and a lot of coconut oil, and to be thinking about doing that three times a day. Honestly, what Ash and I do is we do our fasting. Mm -hmm. um, I'll now, I got the MCT oil, I got my coconut oil, I'll throw it in a coffee or my smoothie in the morning, and then we just make sure that we're eating healthy fats throughout the day. Yes. Avocado, nuts, seeds, drizzling olive oil all over our food. For the people that do handle dairy okay, you can have the organic grass-fed butter, but just making sure that you're getting high levels of quality fats throwing in that, that coconut oil and doing some fasting and you are gonna get these same benefits. And again, that yes. is not coming from us. That is coming from Julie Danilik and Mark Hyman, two yeah. people that I am obsessed with. And yeah. you can tell I got really into that part. And you know what, also, <laughs> like we've also done it from our experience. So like Kelly was saying, we've been doing our own fasting, which I was hesitant about. Yeah. Um, we've been doing it now since September. And then we've also been having bulletproof coffee. So I see somebody said uh, opinion on bulletproof coffee. Our opinion is delicious. Delicious. Um, get it in you. And if you can tolerate um, like like ghee or clarified grass-fed butter, yep. like Kelly was saying, go for it. Yep. I personally have the coconut and the MTC oil. Um, but yeah, you have some options there, but it is incredible. And it also, on top of that, the one thing that we were going to mention is that after intermittent fasting, if you could either... 
like we, I know we like to promote like the green juice because it's a nice shot of vitamins, but another way to kind of keep up with the ketone stuff is to, to have something like the Bulletproof coffee that's super high in fat or have another really high fat meal. Yeah, like you can make the green smoothie, but just make sure you're throwing in something um, like avocado. You could throw in some actual, like actual coconut, blend that up. I buy frozen coconut. You could throw in coconut milk. You can throw in nut butters. Anything like that is uh, gonna get that fat. So if your first meal of the day, you go lighter in the carbs and high in the fat, that's gonna really keep that ketosis going. So that later in the day, if you wanna have those carbs, you can have some. Um, again, we're not promoting that you eat pasta every single day and potatoes, nothing like that, but you shouldn't feel guilty about having a cup of rice or a few sweet potatoes no. or some pasta salad. I have to comment on Kate Stock's thing here that said, um, I feel like the amount of MCT oil, C2 oil would give me the shits. Yes. So when you are getting started with MCT oil, it actually should say right on the label to start with about a teaspoon at a time because it can give you digestive upset. So you have to start small and then you can build yourself up to a little bit more. So yes, it will give you the shits if you do too much at once. Yeah, and then I see the question from Steph that says, um, do you have lower carbs? If you do that, do you have lower carbs and for the rest of the day? No, we don't count our, we don't count our carbs. We just, we literally just eat like we said, what feels intuitive, what feels right. If we're having a heavy workout day, yeah, we're probably gonna have some more carbs. It's gonna yeah. really help with our energy. And if we're, it's, you know, a lot of and the it's time- quality carbs. Yeah, it's really, it's not like we're like pounding back like white bread here. No, we're talking sweet potatoes, we're talking whole grain or gluten-free pasta, mm -hmm. like even just regular potatoes, bananas, they're high in carbohydrates, apples. Like yeah. we don't want you giving up carrots because you're afraid that it's gonna take you out of ketosis. Yeah. And Natalie, you can get MTC oil um, or MCT oil at um, any health food store. I'm gonna get the one that I have, just yeah, so I can show it, them. Do you have the green one? Uh, I have the actual bulletproof one. Okay, so let's see. Oh, do you really? Yeah. Um, I, I can't even SCA. get through a whole coffee with the coconut oil and grass-fed butter coffee. It's so filling. I feel sick towards the end and I never finish it. Well, maybe, I don't maybe know. Maybe a little maybe, less. Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit less. And you, if you go and you buy it somewhere, maybe you could ask them for a little bit less. Um, Do you find that you get nauseous just from coffee in general? Sometimes the caffeine, I get a little sensitive to it. This is going to be backwards for you guys, but I actually have the Bulletproof brand. I got it from well.ca and this is like from the guy. What is from well.ca? Yeah. Oh my God. With the Four Sigmatic. What? Yeah. Wow. So, um... I just started with this. I'm, I'm new to using this. I was just using coconut oil before, so I am just doing little bit amounts. My stomach's been fine, but I, I was following the instructions. And Andrea said that Superstore has it as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go up and yeah, see Superstore some. Yeah, Superstore does have it right now. Oh, really? I don't, I, it's I've a different never brand, seen it there. but I, I'm, from what I remember, it's a quality brand. I remember looking at, I think it was Nutri, Nutriva or something, but from what I could tell, it looked good. Um, this is amazing, by the way, guys. We have 77 of you watching right yeah, now. Yeah, that's this amazing. Might be, this is our busiest Facebook Live ever. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, isn't it net carbs, so carbs minus fiber? Yes, it is. Um, but the example we used is that, like, do you really want to spend your day counting the, like, like make basically finding out what the net carb is and you're once again becoming obsessed with food you're looking at food as a point a calorie um you're not looking at it as a nutrition uh so n yes you were correct it is the net carb yeah um however like just to give like when i did my post earlier with the apple it was really just to kind of make a point yeah but w just for example like a banana like we said is about 20 on average about 27 grams of uh carbs but it only has about three grams of fiber. So it's not a dramatic, some of the foods like an avocado, for example, it's is very high in fiber yeah. versus carbs. But for the most part it is, it is going to take a little bit off. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I, I know me, I get way too obsessive. I get way too obsessive. Yeah. It just creates an obsessive behavior is basically yeah. why we but don't we want do you guys having to do But we do promote a high fat that. diet. Yes. And we do promote Oops. carbs, but not going crazy high on the carbs. We want to go uh-oh, what did you do? <laughs> oh, crap. There, there we go. go. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> um, and, like, there's days where, yeah, like, I don't have heavy carbs for a couple days. And then I'm like, like, today I had sweet potatoes that I made. Yesterday I had regular potatoes. But I, I work out hard. I eat well. And I need those carbs. Yeah. Yeah. Tanisha said the keto diet sounds like a lot like the Dr. Bernstein diet. Don't get me started on that. Um, That's why I grinned because I was like, ah, she's going to go on Oh my God. Did it very successfully, but I couldn't live a regular life. I go out for meals with friends, low energy, etc. Ended up going back to regular eating and gained even more weight. And that, that honestly happens so often. You are not alone there. And that's why 
what I was saying earlier, like through experience, I don't care what science you can go find on the internet. Like don't be sending us a bunch of emails and like, look at this link, look at this link, look at this link. We've read them too. Yeah. Like keto's amazing. Like I don't give a shit because I have worked with people doing it for so long. I know it doesn't, it never, it's not sustainable. If keto was easy and it was like, yeah, no problem. I would recommend it to people for the benefits. Yeah. But I think that it's going to lead to obsessive behavior. It's going to lead to failure and then it leads to your self worth going down. Yes. People who are successful now, where will they be in a year? They probably won't be succeeding at keto. Um, if somebody does it and they do it successfully for a couple months and they're like, wow, I can't do this anymore. And they get off of it and they start like a regular healthy eating style. They probably will be fine. But for people that go in and out and in and out and in and out, those are the people that are going to end up gaining a lot of weight. Um, and actually sometimes even ending up with, um, thyroid problems. Yes. It definitely can wreak havoc on your thyroid. What do you think about carb cycling? Um, honestly, I was reading about carb cycling a few months ago and I remember saying to you that I wanted to, and I got busy and I hadn't really fully done it. So that's a great one for me to look into more. Um, so yeah, thank you for that question because clearly I need to do my research a little bit more on that one. Yeah. Um, from the, from the very little that I know about it, I do think it has benefits and yeah, I know it's your higher carbs some days, lower carbs some days. I probably do it without even, I was just going to say like for me, like, like I will naturally have a higher carb day like without even intent now, but I would have intent behind it before I would have a naturally, um, higher carbohydrate day if I was doing a really heavy lifting day. So yeah. like, that would be almost be like my carb loading day. And then like, I'm not as heavy the next day cause I'm not as active and I don't need as many carbs. And I will say that I eat a lot more carbs in the weekend than I do during the week. So, and I kind of know that I love my weekends to be able to just enjoy the food. So then like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'll, I'll reel it in a little bit. I still, like I said, had sweet potatoes today and potatoes yesterday, but I won't overdo it. So I'm not going to have like toast for breakfast, a pasta salad for lunch, and then pizza for dinner. I would kind of, typically I will choose like one of my meals to have a little bit on the carb or heavy, the carb or heavy, yeah. <laughs> Fine. but that's roughly how I think. I'm like, did I have a lot of carbs yesterday? Yeah. Okay. Then maybe I'll just have a few less today. Yeah. And that's with any food. Yeah, exactly. Um, Holly says, while I do agree and understand that it's possible to feel deprived without healthy carbs, complex like sweet potato, quinoa, etc., I also believe that there is a keto alternative for almost everything if you're willing to research and discover new recipes. Sure. If you're willing. And that's what we said, Holly, that like some people that research the shit out of it can do keto successfully for a while. Um, however, I put that in brackets. Um, a lot of people don't do it and they don't do their research and they just jump on that bandwagon because they want to lose weight and they don't do it right. And then that really starts a cycle of not only like gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight, but it also starts that cycle of, um, of, uh, I don't know, like food addiction. Well, and my thing here that I would say is that if you're doing keto solely for weight loss, then you're not going to be successful. If you're a person that was already really into fitness, say you're doing CrossFit and you eat healthy and you can do it and you know how to do it and you feel great, by all means, you keep doing you. That's awesome. But we think in general, most people don't have that discipline, nor do they even maybe want to have that discipline. And if it's just weight loss, it's not enough. That's not enough of a reason for you to succeed in it. Um, it has to be about more. And yes. that's why like for us, we just know how we would, we both know how we would be. And we know that how our clients have been in the And the, the past. general woman, how this, how this would affect them. And if she's not doing it or he, if you're not doing it properly, it really can mess with your hormones as well, which then slows down your metabolism, which then promotes all these other things from happening. Yeah. So unless you're going to really, really research, like really do your research, it's just not necessary, especially when we just gave you the options. I was just going to say, I, ch- I challenge for, I challenge for you to be like, would I rather do all this research and try to find those different alternatives for the healthy complex carbs you're talking about? Or would you rather just do the intermittent fasting and then have your MCT oil and your coconut oil and still get all the benefits without having to do that? And yeah. you can still have your sweet potato and your quinoa and all that. And it doesn't that. mean like you can still have a low carb diet. We just don't want you thinking I can only have 20 to 50 grams a day. Like that's what we're talking about intuitive eating is it's knowing when you're like, okay, I've overdone it. I need to reel it in. Yeah. You know, and that's, it's just, we don't want you to decide what you should eat based on what a pea strip says. If your body feels like it needs something, it probably needs something. Uh So it's, you're, you're making decisions based on what a program is telling you as opposed to what your 
insides is telling you. Mm -hmm. And that's why like everything is so individual, right? And like, that's why some people can be successful on this. Men generally have an easier time with keto than women do. Typically they do. Yeah. Because of hormones and our sensitivities to it. So maybe Holly, if say you're finding you're having a really easy time with this, maybe your hormones are a little bit more balanced than the average lady. But in general, the average woman is not going to feel that good on this and it's not sustainable. So a lot of people that are doing the keto diet successfully haven't been doing it for that long. I want you guys to come back and talk to us in five years basically yeah. and tell me how yeah. that's going. Yeah. I've been doing uh, gluten free and dairy free as like a 90% lifestyle for six years or more. Yeah. So successfully and without feeling deprived. Um, but again, if it works for you, do it. That's fantastic that you found something that makes you feel good and we're so happy for you. Yeah. But we're protective of our girls and of the people that watch us and we want them to look and feel their best and for the vast majority, it is not gonna work. Yeah. But there are, of course, exceptions to the rule. Yeah. Somebody just said that, um, uh, I think it's Nicholson, uh, if that's your name. I've never understood the whole fad diet of keto. Um, people doing the diet lose weight way too quickly, in my opinion, that. I wanted to touch on I know. That. I have to and I said that to you today. Yeah. If it, if say you're, 50 pounds overweight. Did you gain 50 pounds in six months? No. So why do you expect that you're going to lose 60 pounds in six months? Yeah. 50 pounds in six months. You have to think about it that way. When you actually are dropping weight that rapidly, it can be very hard on your body. Yes. And you're a probably losing muscle too. Exactly. And it's, your body's not sure what's going on. So like a slower, steadier weight loss is more ideal. Of course, if you're really heavy and you have a lot of weight to lose, it will fall off a lot faster. Yeah. And then once you kind of get rid of that water weight, that inflammation yes. and that, that yeah. first bit, it will slow down. It should slow down. Yeah. Like you shouldn't be losing 10 pounds a month constantly. No. And that's like uh, using our banish the bloat as an example. Again, um, our banish the bloat, people do lose quite a bit of weight on average. They're losing about five to 10 pounds. A lot of that is bloating and water retention. That's yeah. why it's called banish the bloat. It's not let's blast the fat, right? Like it's banish the bloat. We're banishing the bloat. And sometimes people feel fat. I hate to even use that word just from bloating, just from simple bloating. And so I know that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so, uh, that's what we, so yeah, you might see some quick results from that, but that is not, we're not trying to promise like you're going to lose this every 10 days. That no, no, is, it's not a good we're idea. Using the banish the bloat as a jumpstart. Yes. And then would I preferably lead you back to the royally fit approach? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Let's uh, just maybe we'll just go through a few more. Yeah, sure. Um, I love all these comments. This is amazing. Thank you so much, guys. So much fun. Fun fact that you might uh, get to regarding ketones generated in the liver naturally via fasting that can support brain function. However, there's still a brain function that requires glucose, aka carbs. Yes. That is a very good fact. Um, as someone who works every day with people regarding their cognition, promoting this for brain health diet is scary. Oh. Yeah. I mean, what is very brain healthy about it is it's high fat. The high fat, yeah. And it's not, the, the healthy part for your brain doesn't necessarily come from the um, depriving you of carbs. So, or the carb restriction, I should say. No, don't use the word deprivation. But yeah, it, that's what it comes from. But like the brain healthy that they can promote actually comes from all the high fat foods. So that Because your brain is like 50% fat. Yeah. So it does need a lot of fat. So we are very about that high fat they're talking about. We just want you to bring the carbs up a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Um, Kate Stock said, some people who go keto say they are doing it because it's less inflammatory um, because of, of the lack of sugars. So my comment to that is I like a lot of the inflama inflammatory foods are the ones that have gluten in them. And so when you're eliminating, <laughs> yeah. And so when you're eliminating carbs or sugars and like those, those actual um, carbs that you're talking about, a lot of the inflammation is actually coming from gluten. So yeah, it's funny that people say they're doing it as an in, uh, anti-inflammatory diet. Kate yeah. Stock is all over this one. I she has love very, it. She's very opinionated. I know. I, uh, miss, I miss you. Bro. And I must be getting tired because I'm stumbling over my words a lot. And you're on your knees for a while now I know. reading these comments. Uh, <laughs> would it be safe um, to you then if you were eating complex carbs, you'd get the same effect? Sorry? I don't know that. I don't understand your question. I'm sorry because we passed what we were talking about. Oh, that happens sometimes. Yeah. Um, uh, should we talk about the Slim and Sexy? Yeah, or the um, banish the bloat and how we can talk about a little bit more about that and then the slim and, slim and sexy. Okay, you go on the banish the bloat and I'll talk slim and sexy. Okay, awesome, slim and sexy. Um, okay, so uh, we were having a lot of success with our banish the bloat. 
challenge. First it was called Tighten and Tone and then we changed it to Banish the Bloat because we thought it spoke more to what we exactly what we were just saying is that it's banishing your bloat. We're not trying to promote like a crazy weight loss diet. That's just an awesome byproduct. Um, yes. So we were having a lot of requests for people to do this uh, and we were just finding it really hard to like launch a date, pick a date, have like a thousand women sign up all at once that we were nurturing all at the same time. So instead, we have decided to make it evergreen. So you can sign up whenever you want. We have created a link in our Facebook above. Um, if you find this on YouTube, it will be below. And yes. Yeah, kidding. <laughs> so um, we have created that. You can sign up whenever you want. When you sign up, it is all um, automatic now. So you will be sent immediately your meal plan and you will be sent a whole bunch of links on basically how to get through it as well as a link to our private Facebook group to help support you through that. So this is our way of showing you how you can reduce inflammation, reduce bloat, see weight loss without following a keto diet. And having the mental clarity shift. Yes. And you still will kind of get like that flu symptoms, but ours typically only last a couple days, not two weeks. And you're not going to go in and out of that um, unless you have a couple months off, not a day or two. Yeah. So yeah, if you guys are interested in trying out kind of like the Royally Fit way, um, please sign up for our Banish the Bloat. It's seven days. It's a challenge. It's not super restrictive. Um, the only thing we don't want you having for those seven days is dairy and gluten because we want you to move into a more um, anti-inflammatory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we want you to move into kind of like an 80, 90 yeah. percent. That's the only. That's only how much you have it within your diet. But to get there, so you get rid of the addiction, um, we also we don't want you having it for the seven days. Yeah, and it, the cool thing too about you, that you get access to that private group is that we've run this three times now as a massive group. Last time we did it, we had a thousand women. So any question that you could think that you might have is already in that group so you can just go to the search on the side and say you're curious about um bulletproof the, coffee the bulletproof yeah you could type it in and anything that's about that topic will pop up if you're not finding what you're looking for so write a question and we'll get back to you as soon as we can mm -hmm. yeah. so this is a free challenge it's our way of sharing what we believe in and what, how we want to show you that you can live a real girl's approach to a badass body so that you don't have to like have major deprivation. Like we have meals on there that are supposed to taste like milkshakes. Not supposed to, they do taste like milkshakes. Like <laughs> we have really tasty, satisfying things, which also leads me into the Slim and Sexy. The Slim and Sexy. So we do have that for sale as well. Are you going to put up a link for that? Or? Yeah, I can put up a link for that as well. Yeah, or just shoot us a DM, whatever, yeah. if you're interested in it. Yeah. So what we're selling is, um, it's 35 recipes. Yeah. That are royally fit approved. Um, we've got burgers. There's ice cream on there. All different recipes that rice, are gluten free, rice dairy free, squares. rice crispy squares. Some of them are a little higher carb. Some of them are on the lower carb. Just like how we live our life. Yeah. So if you're interested in something like that, also you can shoot us a DM. And it's just yeah, 35 recipes that are royally fit approved that are going to be awesome for the summer. Lots of barbecue. Yes. Some stuff you can cook on the campfire. Things yeah. that you would take to family Possibles. gatherings. Oh yeah, the popsicles. Popsicles, yes. And it's, once again, this one you have to pay for, but once again, it's our way of showing you how you can enjoy all your favorite foods in an anti-inflammatory state. Yeah. Right? So like not going and grabbing all of the like, you know, burger buns that are going to like inflame you and make you bloat and really yeah. gassy and all that kind of stuff. Like to, basically to show you how to enjoy your, fra your favorite foods without the bloat. And as an extra bonus... $5 from every single one of these, that, the Slim and Sexy that we sell is actually going to be going to a local charity. Mm -hmm. And I can't for remember. Abuse, the, it's for abused women. It's for um, the Denise House. The Denise House. I couldn't, yes, yes. So it's yeah. for um, abused women that need some support from all of us women. So you know that our obsession and our passion is babe supporting babe. So we thought what a great way to, to raise some money for some women that could use our support right now. So you yes. can kind of feel good about when you make the purchase as well that you're going to be helping some women in need. Yeah. So thank you so much for popping on. That was Should that. we just see if there's any last minute yeah, questions, sure. do you think? Do you yeah, to, no. I'm always nervous that I'm going to be the one that screws it up. Oh, whoa, it's so fast. Don't scare me. Um, she says, if you haven't yet, do the Banish the Bloat. So many amazing, amazing women, women. there oh, supporting yeah. you. And for any of you that follow me on Instagram, I actually went on today on my Insta stories. Do you want me to do it? Yeah, I'm back. Um, and posted <laughs> a, uh, I posted a whole bunch of before and afters. Can I sign up? Yeah, you can, of course. Yeah, I mean, of would course. love you too. Yeah. Thanks, Ash and Kelly. You're most welcome. Ash, uh, I'm just watching this and eating pizza. Help me. <laughs> me. Well, we even have do the health, banish the blue. Yeah, we Get even this. have healthy ways to do um, to to have pizza. Like like once again, we are not restrictive. Like I can't imagine not having pizza again. Um, uh, it is healthy fats though, right? Not bacon fat. Yes, but you can have bacon, and we yeah. still have bacon. I just had bacon last night for dinner. Like it's it's you don't want to have it all the time. Obviously, no, it's, but I would still consider it a treat. 
Yeah. Like it's not something that you need to be like, I can never have that again. Yeah. No. But, but Cheryl, like if you're asking because you're like me and you go on Instagram and you see a whole bunch of people being like my keto dinner and it's like bacon all, dipped in cheese whiz. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> it's just like, yeah, a whole bunch of processed food and it's full of nitrates and saturated fat and all that kind of crap. Um, yeah, that's when people do. You keto can also wrong. look for really quality bacon. Go to a good quality yeah. butcher shop. You can find out what they put in it. It's still probably going to have some nitrates and stuff, but you can get ones that are significantly reduced. Um, and as long as you're not eating it all the time, it's really not an issue. Yeah. Steph said, I so want to start doing gluten-free. Uh, only dairy I eat is some cheese and Greek yogurt. Haven't had milk in a, uh, it's been a while doing coconut milk and almond milk. Oh, I'd love There's some really great goat's milk cheeses out there too. If you're trying to make that switch, I was a cheese full blown addict. It's very addictive. Like super addicted to cheese and I still have it once in a while. I had some this weekend. I was at a cottage. We enjoyed it. It was delicious. But for the most part, I just buy goat's milk everything. How good do my boobs look? <laughs> my new itty bitties. Itty bitties. Welcome to the club. Uh, I agree. Don't do the low carb deal. I did it. Hurt my thyroid. Yes. I am learning to eat, uh, how to eat again now and listen to my body. I actually just started the intermittent fasting plan and I'm really happy with it Yay! so far. That's awesome, Dawn. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm excited to do the intermittent fasting update in two weeks. I'm looking forward to yeah, that Yeah, me too. So make sure you put that in your calendar. Just tell me a good one. Yeah, I've read that low carb diets can cause irregular periods and is concerning for premenopausal women. Yes, and it's actually concerning for women that aren't premenopausal as well. So yes, it can actually. That's what I mean. Women's hormones are so freaking sensitive and you have to be very careful with limiting your carbs 110%. That's why some people that feel really good on it and seem to be successful with it, they actually have like a pretty good hormonal balance. Doesn't mean it won't go in balance, but a lot of people that don't feel well on it is because our hormones aren't perfectly balanced and it's like such a balancing act, Yeah. right? So yeah. It, I just don't want to risk it. No, you yeah. have to be right. And I don't know why I lost my period for two years, but it actually was at a time where I was trying to be low carb. I over exercised. Um, I don't know now if it's because I had my breast implants. I have no idea, but I actually did lose my period for two years and almost went into menopause. So maybe it was you from being together. You never have children. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're like basically, your hormones were, they're like, what? go buy a book and learn what it's like to go through menopause. Like I had all the night sweats, like I had everything happening. It's terrifying. Um, yeah, it is terrifying. So maybe it was influenced. I think it was a whole bunch of things yes. happening. And that's but, usually what it is. So if your hormones get messed yeah. up, it's usually not just one thing. So that's why um, I think it was Holly that was saying that her, like, her hormones and everything seemed to be well. And that's maybe she's just lucky and has great hormones, but unfortunately, some women have crazy things happening. Yeah. So that's yeah. something to think about. I would say a lot of women, even just from like our daily environment, like it's really hard not to be um, crossing paths with something that is an well, endocrine all disruptor. The, all the extra estrogen. Yeah. That we're consuming. Well, like that's even, a whole other Facebook live you yeah. should do. Like even every time you have, even if you go and you get a water bottle that's made of cl uh, plastic, that's an endocrine disruptor. Like you so, can't. So is our air that we're yeah. breathing. It's fairly polluted now. It's not like it was a hundred years ago. Like there's a lot of things that we consume every single day that mess up your endocrine system. The body lotion that you're using. Yeah. The, the stuff the you're makeup. using to wash your dishes, your laundry detergent, everything you put on your skin. If it's not like organic and natural, it's going to have an effect on your hormones yep. straight up. Yep. Um, my parents both eat a keto diet with 20 grams of carbs daily. There's a 20 carbs and one bottle of Mill Street organic. So that's a big <laughs> heck no for me. That's where I agree with you, Beth. That's a good beer choice too, by the way. I randomly popped in because so many people I know are doing keto. It just doesn't seem realistic long-term. It's not realistic long-term and that's why we don't promote it. Thank you so much for joining Yeah. Me. Should yeah. we wrap it up? Oh, Barbie. What did she say? Oops. Oh. Plastic is bad for your hormones. Yes. And Barbie's actually in school right now to become a nutritionist as well. Oh, is she? Yes. That's awesome. Yes. Um, she said, uh, Natalie was like, can you show the bulletproof uh, bottle up close again? I just want to make sure. Yes, yeah, so it is my... backwards that you'll see it. Um, but it's the brain octane. Look for this little bird. This is the bulletproof one. Yeah. So that's his brand logo. Um, so he's here. He's got it called brain octane. And then it says medium chain triglycerides. Yeah. Okay. So the only ingredient in this is modified coconut oil. Yeah. So that's when you know you've got a good one. That should be the only ingredient in it. Yeah. Yeah. Becky said, looking forward to the intermittent fasting video again, yeah. which is awesome. We can't wait to do an updated one. And also Becky, cause you're on Royally Fit Online, we're actually doing a intermittent fasting goal. Um, yeah, I guess challenge, yes. sorry, in a couple weeks. Yeah, and so. also just next week, our Facebook Live's gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna be doing a workout with you guys. We haven't done a workout in a little little while, so next week it'll be if you're down to get a little sweaty with me, because I'm sure it's gonna be super hot out. We're gonna yes. do, a, do a nice quick workout. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
last, last thing and then we're gonna go on. Um, uh, you guys are so amazing. Honestly, this uh, live feed has been the most informative I've been in. Thank you. You're most welcome, Aww, Steph. Thanks thank for, so you. much for joining. And then the last question is, ladies, whoops, um, can you make uh, and take or do you have a drink right away? Can you make or take? I don't know what question. I'm sorry. Sorry. But maybe re-ask and we'll, we'll be popping on later to answer questions and stuff. So if you can reword yeah. it because... And we might just be tired and not understanding. Later. Yeah, I know I am. Because I keep stumbling over my words. I don't know why. I'm like, <laughs> we were working all day and now we're like. <laughs> yeah. So we should have put the video up when we were talking at my kitchen table. I know. And then just had we you guys watch that. We should start recording our brainstorm and when we're doing the research and yeah. the epiphanies we have. And yeah. maybe that'll be our podcast content. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much, guys. Thank you, guys. And uh, we will see you next week for Kaylee's workout. Yes. And I just want to say, too, if you enjoyed this and you have people that you think would enjoy it, please tag them in this. Please feel free to share this. Yes, please We're share. We're doing this because like, we really genuinely care and want to help as many women as possible. So get the word out there for us. Tag your friends. Share it. That would be yeah. really, really, really appreciated. Yeah. And yeah. listen to this. It sounds like I'm farting. On my couch? <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you so much. We'll Bye. see you soon next week. Mwah.